Welcome everyone to our course Digital Design with Verilog. In today's class, we will continue our discussion when, on Quine McCloskey method. Specifically, we will talk about this prime implication chart, its reductions and branching method. This part of the slide was prepared from chapter 4 of Kohavi's book. So, if you recollect this switching function minimization steps, the basic idea is that you have switching function given as sum of product form you first identify all the prime implicants that cover all the min terms of that particular uh, function and then you basically select a subset of this product prime implicants that uh, cover all the product terms. So, once you try to cover this uh, all the product term with prime implicants the steps are like this right. So, first we identify the essential prime implicant we will select all of them. Then we will identify the re redundant prime implicant which is already covered by this essential prime implicants. So, we will remove them, we will not remove accept them and then we have rest of prime implicants right. So, now I have to select a subset of this rest of prime implicant such that I cover all the min terms of the function with minimum number of prime implicants and with minimum number of literals because my final objective is to have a function with minimum number of prime implicants with minimum number of literals. Okay. So, in Quine McCloskey method the first steps of identifying all prime implicants is done in a tabulation procedure. So, what we does there just to recap given a function which is sum of this product min terms what we will do we will sort them or we group this particular min terms in terms of number of ones they have. Okay. For example, 0 has a number of 1 is 0, 1, 2 and 8 has number of 1 is 1. So, I group them like this, 5, 9 and 10 has number of 1, 2 and then 7 and 13 has number of 1 is 3 and 15 has number of 1 is 4. So, I group this main terms present in that function in this way. Then what it this quine mccloskey method does? It basically check between two successive group right between two successive group between 0 and 1, 1 and 2, then 2 and 3, then 3 and 4 okay. between the main terms of these two successive group. What it does? It just check whether if these two main term uh, differ by a single bit or not. Okay. So, for example, if, uh, if you take this 0 and 1 they differ by a single bit. So, these two main term can be grouped into a implicant which is given by this. So, what will happen? I will just put a dash here and rest of the places I will put 0. So, this way all the product terms of each group will be checked with each other and we will club this uh, groups whenever there is a difference of 1 bit. So, this way we will get these implicants. Okay. So, this implicant is obtained from 0 and 1 combination, this is obtained by 1 and 2. Uh, the mean terms with one number of 1 is 1 and number of which 2. This is obtained with 2 and 3 and this is obtained for 3 and 4 in the sense number of 1 present there in the mean terms. So, whatever the product term that get covered I will just put a tick. If all of them got tick here that means they are all covered by a bigger implicant. So, they are they do not need further. Okay. In the next step what I will do I will now group I will compare between uh, these two groups right between again two successive one. Again I look for option where they two in terms are differ by a single bit position and they are dash in the same place. Okay. So, this way I will again club this this with this you can see here the number of 0 is 0 right. So, you can actually see this this groups now this is the group where number of 1 is 0 this is the group with number of 0 is 1 this is the group with number of 1 is 2 this is the group with number of 1 is 3. Okay. Now, again I will do the same procedure I will compare 0 with 1 then 1 with 2 and then 2 with 3. So, whenever I compare with 0 and 1 whatever the terms that can be clubbed together they will uh, be written to the next table okay. and then 1 and 2 I will compare I will run right in the table and so on. So, this is the resultant table 
and here also if you see that all the terms are ticked means they are all covered by a bigger cubes that means they are not prime implicant. So, this way uh, after combining 0 and 1 I got this one right 0 and 1 this is obtained by 1 and 2 and this is 2 and 3 ok. So, this way I keep continue this process until I cannot club or multiple term into 1. So, here this process will stay stop here because no further grouping is possible between these successive groups. So, whatever the in the whole process wherever there is no tick that is the prime implicant. So, in my example all the terms here is ticked all the term is ticks that means they are not prime implicant, but here none of them are ticked that means these four are the prime implicant corresponding to this function ok. So, this can be easily automated you can understand that uh, you can write a program that can do this and it does not matter how many variable that function has it can be extended to n number of variables ok. So, this talks about the step 1 of my process. So, in the for step 2 of the process what we do we create a prime implication chart what is this in this particular prime implication chart we keep a column corresponding to each mean term present in the function that 0 1 2 5 to 15 whatever present in this f ok. And whatever the prime implicant I obtain I will put them as a row right and our objective is to cover this mean term in the columns by the rows minimum number of rows. In doing so what we do we identify what are the prime implicants are essential first. How we will do that? We will identify is there any column which is only covered by a single prime implicant. Just to add one more point if a prime implicant covers a particular mean term I will put a cross here. For example, this A is a prime implicant which covers 0, 1, 8, 9. So, I will put tick in 0, 1, 8 and 9 position in this prime implicant chart. So, after this I will identify the essential prime implicant by looking into the column for which there is only a single tick right. It means this is the mean term which is only covered by B. So, that means B is a essential prime implicant. So, this way I identify that I need this 2 is covered by B, 10 is covered by B. So, they are essential and then 7 only by D, 15 also only by D. So, that means B and D are the essential prime implicants right. implicates right. So, once we select this B that will also cover 0 and 8. So, I will put a tick here in 0 and 8 as well. So, 2 is covered by uh, B, 10 is covered by B, uh, 7 is covered by D and then 15 is covered by D right. So, and then B also covered uh, this uh, 0 and 8 d also covered 5 and 13 right. So, once we uh, cover all these things so that means b and d is selected and remaining product. Uh, so, this is the essential prime implicant there is no redundant prime implicant in this scenario. So, now my next step is to identify the subset of this c and d because these are the remaining prime implicants which will cover the rest of the mean term which is 1 and 9. I have to sub select a subset of CD such that 9 and 1 is get covered right. In my example which is much simpler example. So, what I can see that if I select C that will cover 1 and 9. If I select A that also cover 1 and 9 it means if I just select sorry A and C. So, in this example it will be I have already selected B and D. So, uh, only remaining is A and C. So, I have to select a subset of prime implicant A and C which will cover 9 and 10 both right. So, in my example uh, if I select A that also cover 1 and 9, C also cover 1 and 9. So, I can select either A or C. So, I will have two such uh, minimal expression for this. If A and C have a different number of uh, literals then I have to select one, but in this case then literals are same ok. So, this is the recap of quine mikloski method that we have discussed in previous class. So, now I will go further. 
So, one what whatever I just talked about this uh, selecting this essential prime implicants are easy there is no problem because it is non unambiguous. But selecting this non essential prime implicant this A and C subset of this is not a trivial task that is what I uh, conclude in the previous class. Okay. Let us see one example for that. So, in this example there is a function which has the mean term 0, 1, 3, 4, 7, 13, 15, 19, 20, 22, 23, 29, 31. And if I take this one and try to find out the prime implicant for this using this kind of tabulation process, I uh, will end up having this many prime implicants which is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H and I, where A represent W, X, Z, B represent X, Y, Z and so on. Okay. So, then I will construct the prime implication chart as the way I described in the previous slide. right? So, here I will have column for each mean term, I have row for each prime implicant. right? And then I will put a cross if a particular prime implicant covers that particular mean term. Okay. Let us say I have done all this process and I got this. From this I identify A is a essential prime implicant because this 13 is only covered by A. C is also a prime implicant because 90 is only covered by C. Similarly, 29 is only covered by B, A. So, A and C are the essential prime implicants. So, in any minimal expression A and C must be there. Okay. So, now because of A 15 is also got selected right 15 is also is covered and also 31 is also covered because of C 3 is covered 7 is covered and 23 is also covered right. So, what I understood here uh, the remaining mean terms is 0 1 4 20 and 22 there are 5 mean terms yet to be covered by any prime implicants right. And remaining prime implicants are there is B, D, E, F, G, H and I. So, what is I have to do? I have to select a subset of this prime implicant B, D, E, F, G, H, I which will cover 0, 1, 4, 20 and 22 mean terms. I have to select a subset of this prime implicants minimum number of prime implicants from this such that the minimum prime implicant selected have the minimum literals. Okay. So, you can understand this, this is not something just looking into the prime implicant chart you can conclude here because it is not so obvious here. So, we need to automate this process. Okay. So, how can I do that? So, what I can the same example that I have taken in this previous cases. So, what I can do I can take the same example the first thing is that I now sort this prime implicant in based on the number of mean term it covers. Okay. For example, A covers 4, B covers 4, C covers 4, whereas this D covers 2, E covers 2 and so on. Right. So, I will sort this particular prime implicants first in the prime implication chart based on their number of mean terms it get covered. Okay. So, this is be sorted order now. Okay. So, this is the it's obvious thing just we just rearrange the rows based on the number of mean terms it covered. Okay. Obviously, if the number of literals are less it will cover more mean terms because it is a combination of more mean terms. If the number of literals in a prime implicant is more it will cover less number of mean terms because it is a combination of smaller number of mean terms. Okay. So, this is understood. The first thing is that we will identify the essential prime implicant which is already done that A and C are the uh, essential prime implicants that I have already discussed because of this, this and this. So, this uh, and they are also covered this mean term 3, 7, 15, 23 and 31. Okay. So, I can remove this A and C and these columns and I can create a reduced chart. Okay. Where I will remove this A and C 
and I will also remove the column which is get already covered by NC which is 3, 7, 15, 19, 13, 23, 29 and 31. So, this will be removed okay, because they are already get covered by ANC. So, remaining one I will put it here okay, 0, 1, 4, 0, 1, 4 then uh, 20 and 22. Right. So, this I will these are the reduced column. Okay. Similarly, A and C I will remove, I will put remaining prime implicants. So, if you recollect after essential prime implicants, we also may have some redundant prime implicants. So, you should remove the redundant prime implicant as well. So, in this example, if you see that if I select A and C, the B is redundant because B is covering 7 which is getting covered by C, B is covering 15 which is covered by A, B is covering 23 which is already covered by C, B is covering 31 which is already covered by A. So, that means whatever the main terms B covered they are already get covered by A and C. So, B is redundant, redundant prime implicant. Okay. So, I will remove B as well. So, in the row I will put D, E, F, G, H and I. Okay. So, this is my reduced prime implication chart. So, this again can be done automatically. Okay. So, once I receive reach this reduced chart, okay, what is my objective? I have to select a subset of this D, E, F, G, H, I which will cover 0, 1, 4, 20, and I have to select a minimum subset of this. Okay. So, how we will do that automatically? Okay. So, this can also be automated, it is like this. You just assume now I have some Boolean variables or switching from a variable. For each prime implicant, I have a switching variable now. So, this D are the prime implicants which represent a prime implicant. But let us say I take a corresponding Boolean variable okay, or switching variable. So, I will have D, E, F, G, H, I for each prime implicants. Right? So, now to cover 0, I have to select either H or I. Right. So, I will now rewrite this in terms of a switching expression. Okay. I have to select either H or I. To select uh, to cover 1, I have to select either G or I. Okay. So, definitely I have to select 1 between H and I and I have to select 1 from G or I. Okay. Then to cover 4, I have to select F 1 of F on H. So, I have to select and I have to select F or H and I have to select 1 of E and F for 22. So, E or F and I have to select 1 of D and or E for 22. Okay. So, D or E. So, now if I simplify this equation, I will know what are the uh, prime implicant will be uh, will cover all of them. Okay. So, just try to show you one steps. So, if I try to cover this one, it will be G H plus G I plus I. Right? You know that X plus X Y equal to X into 1 Y which is X. So, G I is effectively I. Okay. So, it is basically G H plus I. right? So, this is result in this. So, I can now com multiply this with F and H. So, it will result in F G H plus F I plus G H plus H I. Okay. So, again I can apply the same rule this rule. So, I will end up getting G H plus F I plus H I. Right? This I can multiply with 
e plus f the next one again I will get the equation I can remove all the redundant terms then I will get some product term that will multiply with d or e and then I will get a final sum of product expression ok. So, you can try yourself. So, here I have uh, have that. So, this is my initial equation if I do this simplification I will end up getting this one ok. What does this mean? It is saying that either you select E H and I or you select F E F and I or you select D E for F or I or you select E G H or you select D F G H. So, if you select any of them that will cover all the product term just to explain why. So, suppose if you select E H and I ok. So, E will cover 20 and 22 H will cover 0 and 4 and I will cover 0 and 1. So, out all will be covered ok. So, similarly you, you can select one of them ok. All of them have 4 literals ok. So, the number of literal will be same in all cases. So, only cases uh, is that in this case uh, in DFGs there are 4 prime implicant. So, this is not it will not result in a minimal expression. So, I do not will select this, but any of 4 is fine and I will if you remember I have already selected A and C right. So, my minimal expression will be A or C plus E plus H plus I this is one possibility or A or C plus E plus F plus I this is the second possibility. Similarly, A or C plus D plus F plus I this is the third possibilities and A or C plus E plus G and H. So, these are the minimal expressions ok and this is this, this is this, this is this and this is this I by the right in terms of uh, the product expression. So, this com understand this actually tells us how we can starting from the function how do you identify the prime implicants, how do you identify the essential prime implicants, how can you remove the redundant prime implicants and then how do you select a subset of non-essential prime implicants using that tabulation method and prime implication chart. So, that is complete this uh, quine mikloski method ok. Now, I am going to talk about certain optimizations that you can do in the prime implication chart to reduce your complexity of the uh, automation process ok. So, for that it is basically reduction of the prime implication chart. The first thing I am going to discuss is deletion of rows ok. What is that? In some cases we can delete certain rows ok uh, which will not impact your final minimal expression. I will explain why ok. Let us take a function which is in terms of 5 variables say v, w, x, y and z. So, it can have the value from 0 to 31 and these are the main terms present in this function ok. Out of this 32 uh, fun um, functions these are the 1, 3, 4, 5, 6 and so on ok. And for this I identify these are the prime implicants for this using the tabulation method. So, to save time I am not showing that uh, computation, but this is something you can automate it or you can do it manually you will get it ok. So, first thing first in this particular uh, uh, cases first I will identify the non sorry essential prime implicants ok. And I can see here that the column where there is a single cross these are the kind of things is important for identifying the essential prime implicants and so j must be selected because it is only selecting one and if I select j it will also cover 3, uh, 5 and 7 right. Similarly, for 25 I have to select k because k is cover only 25 and if I select k it will also cover 27 ok. And same manner I have to select a because a is covering 21. 20 and 21 and if I select A that will also cover 23 and 24, 22 and 23. Similarly, I have to select B 
B is covering uh, uh, is the essential for 12 and 13. So, uh, B will be selected and if I select B that will also cover 14 and 15. So, these are the columns are got selected and these are the rows got selected. 4 rows are essential prime implicant and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 uh, columns or the mean terms are already covered by these 4 essential prime implicants. Okay. So, now the next task is to identify the non-essential prime implicants. Right? So, I can remove these uh, rows and columns and I end up getting this reduced chart. Okay which I have already uh, shown earlier. Uh, now, in this if you look into this uh, prime implication chart carefully because from here I have to now select the non-essential prime implicants. Okay. So, now I will just talk about how I can remove certain further rows here because you, you know that uh, here the equation will be more complex if I take a Boolean variable corresponding to C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay. So, can I reduce this chart further and the answer is yes. So, for that I use a term dominating row and dominating column. Okay. So, dominating row is what? If you take this C and D, you can see here wherever D is 1 that means what? Whatever the product term D covers, C also covers okay. which is basically uh, C is covering 18, 19 and 26 and D is covering 18 and 19. Okay. So, if I select, so that means I will see C dominates D. Okay. So, here I will say C dominates D. So, if C dominates D, what does it mean? If I select C, all the mean terms that get covered by D will be also be covered, but the vice versa is not true, the reverse is not true. So, if I select D, it will not cover 26, but if I select C, it will cover 18 and 19. Right. So, that means, here if C dominates D, you remove D. Okay. Because if I select C as a non-essential prime implicant, all the mean terms that is covered by D will also be covered. Okay. So, I do not need D effectively. I have to select 18, 19 and 26. So, I will always select C, I will never select D because that will not result to me in a minimal one. So, this is what is called deletion of rows. So, I can delete D. Same thing happen here G and H. right? So, if you selected G is covering 11 and 29 and H is covering only 19 and also between G and I because G is covering 11 and 19 and I is only covering 8, 11. So, this H and I are redundant. Okay? That means, G dominates H and I. So, remove H and I. So, if I remove D, H and I, I will only have C, E, F. So, C, E and F. I will not reduce any column here. I will keep all the column as it is. So, you can see here, here this reduce chart, this is much simpler. Again, I identify that to select 18, I have to select C. So, now C will be a must for me and if I select C, it will also cover 19 and 26. I also find that E is only covering 10. So, I have to select E as well okay. and if I select E, it will also cover 10, 11 and 26. So, that means, if I select C and E, that is good enough in the entire chart to cover all of them, which is not very much visible in this bigger chart. Okay. So, this way in the first step I have selected A, B, J, K and second step I have selected C, but after deletion of rows. So, deletion of rows is an step which will reduce the complexity of selecting non-essential prime implicants. Okay. In the same way you can also delete some of the column. Okay. Here again I will introduce the term of dominating column. Okay. The concept is same. If say column 10 and 11. So, whatever the uh, places you have crossed for 11, you have crossed uh, for 10, they are subset. right? What does it mean? So, for to cover this 10, you have to select either E or F. Okay? 
so first of all you have to define what is uh, dominating. So, here 11 dominates 10 right 11 dominates 10 ok. Why? Because for 11 uh, you have 4 crosses and 10 you have 2 crosses and wherever the 2 crosses for 10 they are the same places 11 also have covers ok. Now, you can see here that I have to select uh, either E or F to cover 10 you have to there is another alternative ok. So, if you select E or F that will also cover 11 ok. So, that means if I select E or F I will never going to select uh, this G or I to cover 11. So, that means these two crosses are kind of redundant. So, what I should do I can remove the column 11 right why? Because if I take a decision for 10 that will also make sure 11 also get covered ok. So, the other part is not necessary. So, this is the reverse of the de deletion of rows ok. In deletion of rows if C dominates D I will delete D. Here if 11 dominates 10 I will remove 11 ok. This is the opposite one ok, but this is something understood. So, if I apply this process, so I will I do not need basically 11 in similar manner. So, you can actually remove this column 11 and you can you can actually construct the reduced chart where we have only 10, 18, 19 and 26 and in the row you will have all C, D all of them ok. So, the idea here is that you basically create this you select the essential prime implication uh, essential prime implicants and then you apply this deletion of row and deletion of column iteratively to reduce the size. You may have a scenario after deletion of row you, you enable probably certain deletion of column possibilities or if you apply this deletion of column that might probably enable certain deletion of row right. So, you can apply this iteratively until you get the minimum chart and this is basically uh, the steps that should be performed before doing this that this A B C D uh, that uh, that boolean uh, proper possibility that I have explained ok. After reduction if you cannot select them uniquely you apply this rule and uh, select the minimum one ok. So, this is something understood. So, these are the things that basically makes the process simpler right add values to the coin McCloskey method. The basic steps are remain the same. The last part was branching method ok. So, what it does is basically as I mentioned after construction of the prime implication chart you are going to select the essential prime implicants ok. But what if there is no essential prime implicants? So, then what will you do? So, there is no essential prime implicant means you have to go for deletion of row and deletion of column. What if, if there is no added redundant rows or redundant column that you can remove ok. So, that means your prime implication chart cannot be reduced as well. So, you cannot select essential prime implicants which will reduce your chart, you cannot delete rows or columns which should have reduced your chart, what should you do? In this case, so this kind of cases it is basically called cyclic chart ok. So, this is basically cyclic prime implication chart. In this case you need this branching method to solve this cyclic dependencies ok. So, let me explain this uh, with an example say you have a function f which has the mean term this. So, this is of a vari variable w, x, y and z and these are the mean terms present in f 6. So, if you put these values this 0, 1, 5, 7 and all in a truth table you will end up getting this ones ok. You can see here there is a cyclic kind of things right you have this this is one prime implicant, this is one prime implicant, this is one prime implicant and this is one prime implicant ok. So, it is kind of a cyclic way right or you can, so these are the one possible prime implicant. So, there is few more prime implicants are there. So, if you select this way right. So, suppose this is one prime implicant, this is one prime implicant, this is one prime implicant and this is one prime implicant. So, there are effectively eight, 8 prime implicants are there. Okay. and they are actually put into into this table. You could have identified this with your 
tabulation method in coin McCloskey, but I just do it with a Carnot map because through Carnot map also you can find out all the prime implicants. Okay. And you have these are the mean term that is present in this function. Now you see uh, there is no column where there are single cross. Okay. You see everywhere there are two crosses. In every column there are two crosses, right? There are two crosses. Every column there are two crosses. So effectively there is no essential prime implicant. There is no such row where if you have three cross here you have two cross here, right? So there is no such cases. Okay. You do not have a column uh, like this, right? You have a column where there are three cross here and there are two crosses here. So these are the cases where you can delete rows and columns, right? So that you cannot do. So now you are basically stuck here, right? How to go ahead in this scenario? Here you have to take an arbitrary decision that, for example, to select say to cover zero, either you have to need a or h, right? You need or a or h. You in any minimal expression, either a will be there or h will there be. At least one of them will be there. So let's say I select a. Okay. So that this is kind of a to break the bottleneck. Okay. So I'll select a arbitrarily because I have to select A or H, let us say I have selected A. Then what will happen? If I select A that will cover this uh, 0, 1, 1 and this I have selected. So, I will now have a reduced chart where I have this B to H, this uh, rows will be there and 5 to 15 columns will be there and this is this. Okay. So, this is my reduced chart after selecting A. Now, you can see that you have uh, opened up many case cases of dominating row and dominating columns. You can see here this C dominates B, right. So, I will basically remove B, right. Similarly, G dominates H, so I remove H. So, so this way this B is removed and H is removed, okay. So, then once you remove this uh, B and H, you can see that for 5 your C become essential prime implicant because it is covering C is now covering 5 which is not covered by anybody else. Similarly, G become because you do not have this row right these two rows are not there. So, then that means 8 is only covered by G right. So, you have to select G. Similarly, uh, C is covering 5 in this column we have only one cross right. So, I have to select C. So, if I select C it will also cover 7 if I select G, it will also cover 8 and 10. So, you have only remain 14 and 15 and E is covering 14 and 15. Okay. So, you can uniquely decide that I have A C G E is the is the minimal set of prime implicants that is covering this. Right? If you go back to this uh, your uh, this table, it will be either this one right? or if you start now with H, right, because you have selected arbitrarily A, right, you never know that you may end up having a minimal expression with H. So, you have to try with this is where the branching comes, right. You take a branch, you try to identify the minimal expression arbitrarily selecting A, but there is no guarantee that with A you will get the minimal expression, right. So, you have to try with H as well, okay. So, I will uh, do the same process. So, if I select H, arbitrarily. Okay. So, in this table, so if you see here if I select H, so what I will do? I will just remove this uh, column and this column will be removed because they are covered by H. So, I will have a reduced chart now which have 1, 5, 7, 10, 14, 15 are the columns and B to G, A to G are the rows. Okay. So, this is my that reduced chart okay. after selection of H. Again you can see here that A is redundant, so I will remove this one, G is redundant because uh, they are getting covered by F and then uh, if I remove A and G, B become essential because it is covering uh, 1 which is not covered by anybody, then F is getting uh, essential, so F will be selected. So I have already selected H, now I have selected B and F, B and F are the essential one now. So e with B also covered 5 with F 10 and 14 are covered. So, now if I select D it will cover 7 and 15. Okay. So, I have to cover D. So, I will either get 
this as the minimal expressions or the other one right. So, I can also so if we start with h I will probably get this one ok, but both of them has the minimal number of uh, product terms or the prime implicants and the number of literals are also same. So, I will say both of them are the minimal expression right. So, basically for this example I have two minimal expression. and this I obtain by taking a branch in either A or H. So, I have started with A and H you could have taken that for 15 it is either D or E right. So, you can say either I will select D or E then again you will get reduce the chart and then you take a two branches and then you uh, identify the minimal expressions and then you can if both of them are some you select both or if one of them is uh, uh, optimal then you select one of them ok. So, this way you can actually resolve the cyclic dependencies. So, uh, just to summarize the branching method the prime implicant chart function uh, which map is cyclic then chart is it is also cyclic. So, in this case you apply to branching process to reducing the cyclic chart and then you do the normal uh, prime implication chart uh, that selection of essential prime implicants and non-essential prime implicants. Uh, and then you have to uh, since this is arbitrary choice you do not know what is the minimum. So, you have to take both the branches and then this minimum will be selected ok. And this uh, cyclic thing may arise any part of your process right. It may be not be that your initial uh, chart is cyclic it may happen that after selecting the essential one the reduced chart becomes cyclic ok. Or say after reduction of deletion of certain rows or columns your chart becomes cyclic. So, whenever it such cyclic uh, dependencies come you have to take a branch and then you get two solutions and then the selected minimum ok. So, I will conclude this discussion by just talking about whether this coin McCloskey method can be automated the answer is yes right. So, you can write an algorithm that will uh, order this uh, uh, this product term based on the number of one present there and then you can write a uh, that for loop two for loop that is basically take two cons consecutive groups of uh, pin terms and then compare between them and this way this process will be repeated until you stop right until you, you it uh, the number of iteration may be uh, the number of, of variables present in that function. So, although this is a complex function uh, uh, it is basically kind of n cube, uh, but finally you uh, end up uh, getting all the prime implicants right automatically. Once you got this uh, prime implicants you can always construct that prime implication chart and then you can automatically identify this uh, essential prime implicants. You can also identify whether your chart is a cyclic or not. You can also identify uh, the dominating row dominating column reduce them and then once everything is done you can always apply that binary method or switching variable method to identify the minimum non-essential. Uh, prime implicants. So, just to summary this uh, coin McCloskey method can be automated and this uh, this can be extend for many variables not like your Carnot map which can be visualized or solve up to 6 variables this can work for many variables ok. So, this is something uh, can be automated and can be used for practical purposes ok. So, with this I conclude today's discussion thank you. Thank you.